since we're talking about electron transfer reactions, we'll spend the rest of this module thinking about spontaneous electron transfer. We'll do this first from the point of view of energy, and then from the point of view of potentials. So first, energetics. We start with the premise that electrons move spontaneously to lower energy. We also said that electrons go to more positive potentials. But we need to make a disclaimer. Potentials are measured on materials. We'll look at this later on in the module. But when dealing with materials, bond breaking and forming, which affect the enthalpy, and changes of state, which affect the entropy, can play a role in spontaneity. Our assumption for the time being is that the primary role in the spontaneity of electron transfer reactions is played by orbital energies. However, potentials are not as predictable as the periodic properties like ionization energy or electron affinity. Let's start with orbital energy diagrams for A and B. Again, there are more filled orbitals at lower energy and more empty orbitals at higher energy, and we're not going to worry about whether these are only s orbitals, since the same principles will apply for s, p, d, and f orbitals. We're going to ask what reaction occurs between A and B, and we'll make it multiple choice. We know from our discussion of the emission of light earlier in the course that on a single atom, electrons can go from higher energy orbitals to open spots in lower energy orbitals. The same is true if those electrons can find an open spot in lower energy orbitals on other atoms. In this case, the electrons in the upper orbital on A see an open space in the empty orbital on B and will spontaneously jump from A to B. So we can rule out answer number three. Then we have to decide what the products are. Since A is losing electrons, it will go more positive. B is gaining electrons, so it will go more negative. That leaves answer number one as our prediction. We could also ask, what is the oxidizing agent in this process? We've already decided that an electron transfer process will occur, so again we can rule out answer number three. We need to remember that an oxidizing agent oxidizes somebody else and gets reduced in the process. In this case, B is gaining electrons, getting reduced, so B is the oxidizing agent. If we were to ask which has the more positive potential? we need to remember that the material that is better at attracting electrons would have the more positive potential. In this case, the two electrons in question would prefer to go to B. B would be better at attracting them, so B would have the more positive potential. Finally, we ask what reaction would occur between A2 plus and B? And again, we have some choices. In this case, we need to understand right away that the diagram is for A and B, and we need to modify it for A2 plus and B. And what is the difference between A and A2 plus? Two electrons have been removed. Notice that we're keeping the energy levels the same on A2 plus. This is probably not exactly correct. Removing valence electrons probably changes the energy levels for the core electrons a little bit, but we're going to assume they stay the same. Now, will electrons spontaneously go from A2 plus to B? No. In order to do so, they would have to go uphill in energy. Will they transfer from B to A2 plus? No. Again, they would have to go uphill to do so. So in this case, no reaction occurs.